much for watching my YouTube channel. We're continuing our series on being unconventional, running against the grain. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please do that because seriously, at the minimum, the jokes, you just subscribe <laughs> for the jokes at the end. I'm like tongue in cheek because they're really cheesy. However, I'm really excited to continue this series with Jonathan. Jonathan is an interesting guy. He is the son of Saul, Saul who was the first king of Israel. And Jonathan, at this time in history, you know, Jonathan would be the next in line to be the king. But Jonathan was pretty unconventional. Last week we talked about how he attacked a Philistine garrison, the enemy, and he only had two guys, him and his buddy, that attacked, and they beat up this garrison. They killed 20 guys. Um, and it was the beginning of a war that absolutely... Um, the Israelites really conquered or, or really bested, if you will, the Philistines. But I want to talk today a little bit interesting, um, not only with Jonathan, but as we continue to read about him in 1 Samuel, we understand that he became super close friends with David. Now, I like these, these two guys because I think they're similar age. And it's interesting because the first place we really see Jonathan engaging He's fighting, you know, in, in really crummy odds. <laughs> He's got him and his buddy, and they're fighting against at least 20 um, enemy soldiers, the Philistines. But he doesn't necessarily think that that's a problem. And he says it. He says, God can save by many or by few. And I think he has this mindset and he sees God really, really um, come through and give them victory when there is no probability, really, <laughs> they should have lost. But I think that, that Jonathan appreciates, hey, wait a second, you can't just go with conventional thinking. You can't conform to what seems logical and reasonable around you. And I, I like his mentality because he also sees that with David. And so we read about uh, David attacking Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. And again, this is this whole conventional thinking versus going against the grain. And David goes against the grain. We read the story in 1 Samuel 17, David and Goliath. I mean, that's a, it's a quintessential giant versus, you know, ant, and the ant overcomes the giant <laughs> in so many words. I mean, that's the short version. But I appreciate that David doesn't have conventional thinking either because Goliath, he yells at the whole, whole Israelite camp and says, I defy you, I defy your God, all this stuff. And come out and fight me, you bunch of little wimps, losers, you're so scared. You know, and he's intimidating and he taunts them and all this. And David hears it and David's like, no way. I mean, he's, he's outraged, he's offended, he's insulted that this guy would defy the armies of the living God. I mean, that's David's mindset. And I appreciate that Jonathan watches David. And, and Jonathan, I think sometimes when you have unconventional thinking and you don't conform to the world around you, sometimes it can feel lonely. You can feel like, man, nobody's on my page. I'm, I'm kind of just out here swinging on my own, uh, hitting for the fences on my own. But, but I appreciate that Jonathan watches David. And David, this little tiny shepherd boy, with a slingshot, goes up against this huge giant, Goliath, and he kills him. He, like, does the slingshot, and he, the rock hits between Goliath's eyes. He falls down. David runs over, uses Goliath's sword, and chops off his head. And the Israelites are watching on the sideline. And there's this huge army of the Israelites. They're watching because the common mentality, the conventional thinking is, this guy's going to kill us. And David runs against that. And I think that Jonathan watched that and said, here's a like-minded. Here's somebody that has a similar passion to me. And I want to be friends with this guy because he doesn't think the way everybody else thinks. He doesn't have that conventional conformity and, and fear and, and reluctance and hesitation. And, and, I, and when he saw that in David, they pursued, he pursued David and had a fantastic friendship. And I want to just encourage you that it's important for us to have connections and friendships of, with like-minded people that, that really stir and encourage your faith, that, that believe that God can do the impossible. 
that say, yeah, um, I, could, I see the fear, but I'm not going to let that compromise love because love, perfect love casts out fear. And, and this whole idea of David and Jonathan, it was a, a great friendship it, and it flourished over several years, but it started because I believe of their unconventional thinking. Jonathan had unconventional thinking. David had unconventional thinking. And when God brings someone into your life as a friend, and I love this, in in Proverbs 27, verse 17, it says, may iron sharpen iron like a friend sharpens a friend. And both David and Jonathan were iron sharpening iron friendships. And it's important for us to think about the people who are in our lives who sharpen. Is it iron sharpening iron or are you just around people who are continually dulling, dulling your thinking to where you just kind of, you blend in with everybody with the entire mindset conformity? Or do you have friendships? Are you the friend? Are you the friend that promotes faith, that encourages other people to put their confidence in God? And, And let us be iron sharpening iron friends and may God bring to you and me the same that we would also sharpen our friendships that we would encourage faith and that we would encourage confidence security focus on God that no matter what's happening around us that we keep our eyes on Jesus and that you encourage your friendships in that and they encourage you to keep your eyes on Jesus and, and to not walk in the conformity of the ways of the world, the thinking of the world, but that we have friendships that really promote and provoke faith and security, confidence, focus on God. I see this with David. I see this with Jonathan. And it was a wonderful friendship grounded in unconventional, run-against-the-grain thinking. They had greater confidence in God <clears throat> than their own abilities or anything around them even the enemy against him. So I just encourage you today, God can and will provide iron sharpening iron friends for you. And my prayer is that you would enable, God would also help you to be that to the friends that God brings to you. So thank you so much for watching. And of course, you want to hit the notifications. That's fantastic. And when you think about this, um, kind of some of the the stuff we talked about today, here's a question for you to think about and give me some feedback. Um, In your friendships, who has been, who's been a friend to you that most encourages your faith? Who is a friend, has been, or maybe currently, who most encourages your faith? And we're going to finish Holy Buckets with these super amazing jokes. I know you love these. Mm, tongue in cheek. So, irony is chasing a pig and pulling a hamstring hamstring pig get it and you're like oh my gosh that's so lame i know but next week's gonna be so far much better thanks have a great day